Hello guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Welcome back to my channel, and today I wanted to share some ways that you can get better at the game without pure mechanical skill. Now, I'm not someone who will tell you how to get better with mechanical skill, because I'm only a purple parser, which is good, but not the best. And I'll leave that up to people who know a lot more about the game than I do. But I can share other things that can help you out a lot. So let's get into it. Number one is fixing your mental. Because, well, we all know that anxious feeling of going in our first dungeon or going in a trial that's super hard and we heard how hard it is. And listen, Cape West Point is not that hard. Don't, don't fall for it, okay? But I'll let you in on a secret. So let's say you're a sprout. And a full party of sprouts in a dungeon. If you don't know what you're doing, chances are they don't know what they're doing either. The best thing you can do is communicate, relay any information that you might know, and if things go wrong, just talk it out. If you're a sprout and you're in the party of non-sprouts, well, let them know. Be like, hey, first time here, I'm gonna make mistakes, it's all good. Because we honestly don't care if you're a sprout. We know you're going to make mistakes because when we were a sprout, we did too. And we're more than happy to help you. Now, if someone's being rude, well, hey, there's a report button for a reason. So if someone's being rude, just report them. And a GM will get to you super, super, super quickly. The second is to use your UI. Now, my UI is not the cleanest but the thing is you don't need an extremely clean tiny perfect ui you just need it to be comfortable but the key to that is to make sure at first glance everything is visible to you so i will show you for example the mini map is totally fine for me there but i would pull this down so that all my quests don't show up on top of it I have the progress bar of my casts right in the middle. I have the HP bar of the boss right above my major abilities because I'm always looking at the cooldown of them and I'm always looking at the boss's debuffs. And of course, you can select an element, go to UI element settings, and you can Take each and every part individually and scale them. So I have this scaled up to 140 because I want it big and obvious. And you can do that for anything. I did it for my hotbar here for all the abilities that I want to keep track of. And of course, make sure that each class you play, your UI is very customized and comfortable for you. I personally like to put two sets of each spell because the rotation shows a little bit more obvious for me there. Not my ability rotation, but my GCD rotation. And it's also a habit that I had from playing in WoW. But it's something that's comfortable for me, something that I do my best at with the class that I'm playing. So of course, do what you like the most. But Keep in mind to make it as efficient as possible. Another thing with the UI is, especially if you're tanking, you want to take the enemy list and put it right where you can see it. As when you're tanking and you have aggro on something, their icon will be red. And if you don't have aggro on something, their icon will be yellow. And you can click on that enemy on the list and you can target them immediately. And you can gain aggro back. Another thing is to focus target. And you can focus target the boss if the boss likes to move around and you lose track of him. Or you can focus target your tank if you're a healer. And this helps you see him whenever he's running around and you lose track of him. And it's a little bit obvious when you put a marker on someone's head. So focus target is really nice because it only puts a marker that you can see. Number three is to watch guides thoroughly. If you're just starting endgame content and want to be as efficient as possible, watch a guide. 
there's plenty on YouTube. So you can break down one and then watch another one and break down that one. And also of one thing to look out for is clears with your job. Things like if you're a caster or a red mage holding emboldened for a certain point in the fight, which you probably wouldn't have known to do unless you had watched someone else clear it. There's always one for every class, for every boss, so make sure that you watch those as well. Number four is come prepared. Don't show up with like level item level eight food that gives you gathering on your, you know, melee class. Look up your best in slot food for that tier and buy it off the market board. Ask someone to craft it for you or craft it yourself. It's also good to have pots on you because when you see enrage, that's the moment you want to start potting. You don't need to pot any time before that. It's not required. Number five is being more aware. Things like aware of the mobs in the dungeon. So let's say a patrol is coming and you've just pulled a big group. You want to pull them away from the patrol that's walking past you or will walk past you. So you don't have someone else aggro them and bring them into your group and then die. Another thing, especially if you're a tank, is watch your healer's mana and watch if they're using their lucid dreaming. And of course, lucid dreaming shows up as a buff like this and it restores MP over 20 seconds. If you don't see them using that, let them know and you should be good to go. Also, be aware how much your healer can heal when you're pulling pull a little bit more and a little bit more until you think your healer is comfortable and that you're pulling as efficiently and as quickly as possible. Also, if there's not much AoE when you're in like level 15 or 17 dungeon, you can still pull quite a bit but not too much because the mobs will die a lot slower and if you're not comfortable with tanking or healing, Make sure to communicate that to your tank or healer. Also, if you're a healer, you obviously have priorities. And if the tank is about to die, but your DPS is also about to die, of course, you save your tank and let your DPS die. Because if the tank dies, then everyone else dies, and that's not what you want. And if you're a tank, be aware of your positioning. Always look at your mini-map and make sure that you're facing the boss north and everyone else is situated south. Number six is using your cooldowns. So when I was a sprout, I would save all my cooldowns for the boss in a dungeon, which is not good. If you're a DPS and I play red mage, so I'll use red mage for this example. I use embolden as often as I can and it's really, really good on groups that you want to burst down things like wall-to-wall -wall pulls like an Amarat really need emboldened there so make sure that you're using them. Also, don't forget that casters have Addle which reduces magic damage by 10% on the boss or anything that you put it on and melees have Faint which is also a 10% physical damage reduction on a boss so use them for tank busters. If you're a tank, make sure you are using your mitigation cooldowns, but don't use them all at once. Use one after the other after the other and prioritize the longest cooldown mitigation first so that when you're cycling through, you will have the longest one re up and ready the moment your cycle is over. You also can't really avoid auto attacks, so don't try and kite the mobs all over the dungeon. People really hate that and melees will hate you even more, so just don't do it. Number seven is try to align your cooldowns to maximize the damage of everyone around you. So, for example, don't embolden alone in a corner on a boss fight as a red mage. You want to go into the party, embolden when divination or trick attack is also up on the boss and on you. That way you can maximize your damage and everyone's around you. When you're doing higher content and you're a healer or a tank, communicate with your co-healer and co-tank when to use major healing cooldowns or things like reprisal. Number eight is learning other jobs. Playing each role 
regular tank to PS he'll understand other people's mistakes and you can help them very quickly. Like I see tanks pull without using reprisal or arm's length and I let them know like hey, you know, arm's length slows all the enemy mobs attack speed and reprisal reduces the damage around you. So try and use that. And of course you can be nice about it and you should be nice about it because a lot of people just simply don't know. And especially as a tank, it's very good to know healing because you can understand a healer's cooldowns and you can arrange your mitigation around that as well. So that was 9 ways to get better at the game without mechanical skill. So I hope this could help out some people who want to get into endgame content or sprouts that are leveling currently and they really don't understand, you know, how mitigation works, pulling works, other classes work, etc. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I will of course reply and try to help you as much as I can. Like, comment, and subscribe if you want to. And I will see you in my next video.